Now at 10, we'll learn the next steps for the Carthage City Council after they postponed the decision to censure one of its members. Plus, how a Southeast Kansas pet hospital and shelter is recognizing National Change of Pets Life Day. And a local domestic violence shelter asked the community to donate an often forgotten but crucial set of items. The four states most watched news starts now. Police in Neosho, Missouri are searching for a suspect in a shooting. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Tanya Bach. It happened around 730 yesterday at the 800 block of Riverside Drive. When officers arrived, they were told a man, 40 year old Freddie Rodriguez of Neosho, was found in the street with gunshot wounds in his left arm and armpit. He was then located at the hospital in stable condition. Authorities say the suspected shooter is 21 year old Jose Rivera, also from Neosho. They say Rivera and Rodriguez knew each other and Rivera ran after the shooting. A warrant has been issued for Rivera's arrest. A Baxter Springs, Kansas man will spend 50 years behind bars for child sex crimes. A judge today sentenced 40 year old Jeremy Shrout to 50 years in prison. In November, Shrout was convicted of three counts of rape and one count of aggravated indecent liberties with a child. Carthage City Council members should discuss the proposed resolution to censure one of its members in their next meeting on February 13th. The decision to delay the discussion was made at last night's meeting. A busy one. The council member at the center of the discussion is Tiffany Cossey. In the agenda, the discussion about Cossey was scheduled to be a closed session. Cossey and some residents argued that the council should discuss the resolution open to the public, but it was kept as a closed session. Just after 10 p.m., once the closed session was over, council members voted to table the censure until the next meeting. I've only had about 31 hours notice to prepare for this type of thing. Um, and in there, I had to find time to sleep and go to work two times. <laughs> so I've had almost no time to prepare, and I, I feel that it would have been unfair to, for them to have continued with the resolution tonight. I thought that it should be an open meeting. I thought that they should be able to talk about it, and they chose not to. Um, I think there again, we don't have clarity, we don't have honesty. According to City Administrator Greg Dagnan, the information discussed in closed session is confidential because there are city employees involved and the information is protected by the city's HR policies. He also explained that a censure is an opinion of the council, that they disagree with the council person's action, but that does not remove the member from the council. We tried reaching out to all of the council members and the mayor before and after the meeting, but only two answered their phones and said, they had no comment. You can read the full story explaining why the resolution was proposed at KOAMnewsnow.com. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with a first look at weather. Well, of course, we're dealing with the dense fog once again for us today. Some drizzles, some light showers across the region, but temperatures, they're above freezing. 45 for high right where we should be for uh, the second half of January. We started at 37 during the morning hours, but it is foggy. Looking outside in Joplin, looking outside in Pittsburgh, at least temperatures stay above freezing. Upper 30s to lower 40s is where we sit, and that's pretty much where we're going to be throughout the overnight hours. All right, low visibilities, Kansas. They pick up a little bit through the metro and then drop again, but everybody is going to have very low visibilities, especially after midnight tonight. Dense fog advisory till noon for us tomorrow. We're also tracking some showers, which uh, will start to increase a little bit later on tonight and kind of lift into the region and last through the morning hours on your Thursday. We're going to be talking more about that, plus our next system all coming up here in a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. The public today got to know some Joplin businesses better. The Joplin Area Chamber of Commerce held its 31st annual Business Expo. It started yesterday evening with a businesses after hours event for local entrepreneurs to network. The public was allowed to explore the expo starting at noon, learning about all the area has to offer. Well, Kansas Governor Laura Kelly today announced the recipients of the latest round of grants from the Historic Economic Asset Lifeline, or HEAL program. The program helps revitalize downtown businesses, and five Southeast Kansas organizations received funds. Nearly $51,000 are going to Chanute Regional Development Authority. The cities of Columbus and Parsons get $100,000 each, 
and Gerard Main Street is getting 10,000 and the Independence Chamber of Commerce gets 100 grand. Well, today is National Change a Pet's Life Day. According to the ASPCA, approximately 6.3 million companion animals enter animal shelters every year. Persons Pet Hospital is just one of the local shelters feeling the strain that comes with caring for a high volume of animals. KOM's Anthony Saviello has more. Spike and Annie are a doggy duo that were just surrendered to the Parsons Pet Hospital. After the unfortunate passing of their owner, these two now have nowhere to go. Had the, the two dogs that were relinquished, that's what breaks my heart. And I'm going to start crying right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so to say, to say, you know, what's your favorite part about you know, shelter, there just really isn't a favorite part. I don't think there should have to be a shelter for animals. They should all have homes. In a perfect world, Shelley's wish would be a reality. Unfortunately for Annie and Spike, it could be a while before they get to go to a new home. If it were a case of just a temporary issue with all of our animals, then it probably wouldn't be so heartbreaking. But you know, we do have a lot of animals that have been here for months, and there are so many bigger dogs that unfortunately don't have a whole lot of chances. You know, they people just aren't, everybody wants that cute little puppy. Many of these animals may not be that perfect puppy or kitty, but all of them are ready to be loved by a family. We just try to provide like a safe and loving environment where they can grow and rich, try to find their personality so we can find them the perfect home. Not everyone can adopt, but Shelly has a recommendation for that. We could sure use some donations. We could use you know, some volunteers, um, you know, come out and, and play with these animals. They don't, they don't get people playing with them and, and we don't always have all that time. And you can sponsor an adoption. Maybe you can't adopt yourself, but you can sponsor an adoption and somebody else could potentially give a home. Reporting in Parsons, Anthony Saviello, KOAM News. For more information about pet adoption, just go to our website at koamnewsnow.com. A Miami nonprofit is asking for the community's help. The Community Crisis Center helps those who have been affected by domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. Their resources include a 24-bed shelter in Miami. The center is asking for the community's help with their growing need for women's undergarments, including socks, bras, and underwear in all sizes. When clients come and stay with us, they typically are not able to bring anything with them. So they're starting from scratch and we provide all of their linen, clothing, toiletries. So that's just a really big need that we have right now. We're needing to restock our clothing closet. Any donations can be dropped off at the Community Crisis Center Advocacy Building in Miami. Well, coming up, what the remaining presidential candidates are focusing on after the New Hampshire primary. Plus, Boeing CEO testifies on Capitol Hill about the safety of his company's aircraft. After winning Iowa and now New Hampshire, former President Donald Trump says the race for the GOP nomination is effectively over. The Biden campaign is also preparing for a rematch, saying they will run like the fate of the democracy depends on it. And while the president and former president are pivoting to November, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley is vowing to keep fighting for the Republican nomination. Troubles are mounting at the world's largest aerospace company, Boeing, weeks after a door panel flew off a 737 MAX 9 plane mid-flight. CEO David Calhoun was on Capitol Hill today, reassuring key senators the company's planes are safe to fly. Chris Van Cleef has more. Tonight, a fresh look inside that horrifying Alaska Airlines flight, the gaping hole left after a door panel blew out earlier this month, leading to the grounding of the 737 MAX 9. Now, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun is meeting with senators on Capitol Hill. We fly safe planes. We don't Easy put cuts. airplanes in the air that we don't have 100% confidence in. NTSB investigators have honed in on the four bolts that should have held that door panel in place. An anonymous post appearing to be from a Boeing employee alleges Boeing's own records show these four bolts were not installed, raising more questions about quality control. CBS News has confirmed 737 fuselages arrived at Boeing's Renton, Washington plant with so many problems, manufacturer Spirit Aerosystems assigned a team to be on site to make repairs. Ed Pearson is a former Boeing senior manager turned max whistleblower. I mean, would it surprise you? to learn that 
bolts weren't put in a door panel? Not at all. In, in fact, the only thing surprising to us is we're so thankful that it wasn't a fatal crash. In a letter obtained exclusively by CBS News, Senator Tammy Duckworth is demanding the FAA deny Boeing's request for safety waivers on a future version of the 737 MAX. It, it is such a bold face attempt to put profits over the safety of the flying public. It, it um, astonishes me that they would do this. Tomorrow, Boeing will pause production at the 737 factory for a safety stand down focused on improving quality. Boeing is better than this. Flight 1282 should never have happened. Boeing and its supplier Spirit declined comment on those anonymous posts citing the ongoing NTSB investigation. The NTSB says it is aware of those posts. CBS News has not been able to independently verify the accuracy of those claims. The FAA has now approved inspection criteria for the airlines that could lead to the 737 MAX 9s being ungrounded and returning to commercial service in the coming days. But the FAA will not allow Boeing to expand production of the MAX as it had planned February 1st. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Phoenix. A little later, Missouri Southern women's basketball looks to continue its hot streak as they take on Northeastern State. We'll have the highlights. Plus, a thick fog sticks around tonight and more rain in the forecast. We're going to look at that coming up. Well, of course, uh, today was a gloomy day outside. We had the fog, we had the drizzle across the region. We got more rain, which is going to be rolling in for us tonight. We're looking at our tire cam, Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, it's just southwest of Seneca, Missouri, and you can tell it is foggy. Now, it's patchy. Some areas, it's a little bit better. The fog's gotten better through the metro over the past hour or two, so visibility about three miles, but then you can see a lot of other areas about a quarter of a mile and these are going to worsen or get worse as uh, we go through the overnight hours tonight a lot of areas by morning visibility is a quarter of a mile and less so plus we're going to get some rain so the roads are going to be wet and a lot of fog so be very careful if you are going to be out on the roadways dense fog advisory in through the, the overnight hours through the morning hours for us tomorrow then it lifts at noon but we're going to get a little more fog building in tomorrow night a few showers, western counties, most of us dry and just seeing drizzle. But we're going to see rain start to pick up, especially coming out of northern parts of Texas late tonight into the morning hours. So after midnight tonight, the drizzle will start to increase. A few light showers will start to increase. But once we get to about 6, 7 a.m., light rain will really pick up across the region. It's going to be very light, but we're going to have light rain lasting through the morning hours and then it'll start to push out right around the noon hour. Now, rainfall amounts, they're low, but I think most areas, oh, tenth, maybe two tenths of an inch on the Missouri side, under a tenth, Kansas and also Oklahoma. Here's the good news, temperatures, upper 30s to lower 40s, this is where we're gonna stay tonight, so we don't have to worry about anything frozen on the roadways. 41, calm winds, visibility at one mile, on the east side of Joplin. This is round four that we've actually seen this week. We had ice, rain, rain, more rain tonight. And then here's gonna be our fifth round, which will roll in Friday night into Saturday. All right, let me walk you through time. By tomorrow afternoon, mostly cloudy, 48 to 50. Tomorrow night, a little more fog starts to build in, so visibility's drop. As we go through Friday, mostly cloudy, temperatures warmer, we go into low 50s. Look at the rain increasing. Here's 4.30 p.m. Friday. Scattered showers start to work in Friday night into Saturday morning. By Saturday morning, the coverage will increase where most of us are getting a cold rain. Plus, our temperatures will drop into the 30s. Now, our upper level low passes south of us, so we're in the calm ahead, and we should get some dynamic cooling, which will allow those temperatures to drop into the mid-30s if that storm system can strengthen enough. If that occurs, we should get a rain snow mix or maybe switching all over to wet snow. Now this is still three or four days away, but we could get some accumulation. So that's something I'll keep my eyes on as we go through the next few days. 50 tomorrow, 56 on Friday. Cooler for the weekend, 42 Saturday, 44 on Sunday. But look at this, we haven't seen much of the sun in the last couple of weeks, quite a bit of sunshine through most of next week. It gets kind of calm, and then once we get to February 7th and 8th 
in our cycle, the storm system we had on Christmas Eve, all the rain, showers, and thunderstorms will return around February 7th and 8th, and then it picks up again. Okay, well, as long as we don't have another one of those Arctic freezes throwing us back down into the cellar again. We'll see if that happens the last week of February. <sighs> no, not allowed. <laughs> all right, thanks, Nick. Yep. Still ahead, Pittsburgh State basketball returns home to John Lance Arena, and Missouri Southern tries to remain at first place in the MIAA. John Dales has highlights from that and more up next. Missouri Southern women's basketball enters the night as the top team in the MIAA. With that, obviously comes a big target on your back. Tonight, the Lions try to prove they're worthy of that number one spot. Missouri Southern riding a 10 game winning streak, playing host to Northeastern State. Lions come out of the gates red hot. A couple minutes into the first quarter, Caitlin Honeycutt connects on a triple. That puts them up 14 to two, and they're not done. A couple minutes later, Ryan Franklin hits an 18 footer. 19 to four game at that point. We'd hear a lot more from her. Still in the first, Honeycutt from three again. Lions up 22 to six. Now Northeastern State comes back a little bit in the second though, Franklin with a jumper from a similar spot right before halftime, but Southern leading by just five going into the locker rooms. In the third, Lions rolling again. Franklin down low, gets the shot to fall and the foul. Southern up by 14, then Franklin to Brandy Hudson, back to Franklin. She finishes with a game high 23. The Lions coast to an 11th consecutive victory, 72-44 over Northeastern State. Uh, we did a great job of, of finding the man that's open. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't take very many tough shots. All of them were good looks, wide open. And it, it's nice to watch our kids play together, making that extra pass. Second game of the night, Missouri Southern men's hoops facing, facing Northeastern State. Early in the first half, Avery Taggart with a nice crossover. That gets him to the rim for two. Game is tied at four. Eight minutes in now. Nice backdoor cut from Taggart, and the finish again. Lions trailing by three. Southern down by six, and Winston Desisau hits the step back triple. That pulls them within three, but the Riverhawks had the answer basically all night. Trey Cordelbaum finds Anthony Allen down low for the easy two. Then Cordelbaum left open from three. That's up and good. Lions down by 13, lead cut to 11 before Cordelbaum again from three. Lions down 16 at the half and could never come all the way back. Northeastern State wins it by seven. Meanwhile, in Pittsburgh, the Gorillas men's and women's basketball teams each at home with a combined five game losing skid, hoping the Pitt State faithful can help a turnaround. PSU women's basketball taking on Rogers State and diving past her defender here. AC Mays scoops the layup up and in for two. Those are the first points of the game. Later first quarter, Grace Pyle with the smooth backdoor cut to get the open lay in for two. Quick Pitt stayed up by one. Couple possessions later, Pyle to the middle. Foul and the shot drops. Gorillas up by one until a laser nap for the Hillcats. Left open, nothing but bottom. Rogers stayed on top on the other end. Mays once more inside for the Gorillas score. Tie game at that point. Pitt State leading by three later in the first half when the ball gets poked away. And then Alba Lozano Davila ends up with it, converts from close range. Final seconds of the quarter now. Emma Martin knocks down a three. She's fired up. The Gorillas go on to win big, 82-48, final score. Pitt State men's hoops at home against Rogers State. Hillcats, Rodney Battle gets things started on offense. The fake gets up and under and in for two. Those are the first points of the night. Game tied a minute later, drive by Jordan Friesen, kicks it out, RJ Forney. That's good for three, holding the follow through long after. Gorilla's down two midway through the half. Friesen with the distribution to Marquis English, alone in the paint for the easy two. Then Isaac Johnson swarmed by Gorillas, but Gets a tough bucket to go. Friesen on the other end. How about some scoring to go with the assists? 
Then Anthony Marshall dishes this one inside to Caden Fry, who fumbles with it for a second, but gathers and scores. Hillcats leading by four. Late in the half now, Max Alexander diving to the lane. Up top to Tane Prichter. He finishes with authority, but the Gorillas come up short again. Roger State wins it by nine. That's a look at sports. We're back with more news after this. It's police versus fire with the Battle of the Badges in Pittsburgh. The two departments are competing in their annual chili cook-off with the American Red Cross. People donating blood today and tomorrow can try both types of chili and then vote for their favorite. Organizers say the event has brought in more than 100 signups for donations. The fire and police departments both say the competition is heating up. I understand that Hunter Peterson is cooking for the police department. Nice. Yes. Hunter's a pretty good guy. All right, final sports note. Yeah, uh, well, Jim Harbaugh, back in the NFL, the Michigan head coach who won a national championship this year. Now he is the next head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Ooh. I don't like that. Yeah. Because we play the Chargers twice a year, and <laughs> I'd rather them just have a bad coach. True. So, but... It is what it is. Good for him. Got to make it a fair fight. Yeah. I, no, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for us tonight, dense fog sticks around. Temperature tomorrow, 50. Morning showers, 56 on Friday. Rain, possibly some snow on Saturday. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.